Paradise of No Limits. Something good is about to happen to you. I believe in the next few minutes that we have together that God is going to speak directly to you concerning some questions you've had concerning the next steps to take and the moves to make. Whatever you need to do to focus in intently, amen, over the next few minutes, do it. Cut, cut, cut the phone off, amen. Cut, lock the doors, glory to God. Close the blinds, whatever you need to do. Amen. Do it right now because God is about to speak to you. I'm Pastor Zachary Timms. I'm here in Orlando, Florida. I'm standing here on holy ground here at our 60-acre campus we call New Destiny Christian Center. I want to invite you to come on out and worship with us. Amen. Services all throughout the week. Services every Sunday. God is moving. God is speaking. God is healing right from this place. If you need prayer right now, call that number on the screen or go to our website. Also, we invite you to become a part of our 3030 partnership program. Help us keep doing ministry the way that we do ministry and help us take it to another level. Enough said. God is about to give you divine instruction on how to break the negative cycles and negative seasons in your life. Something is about to be released through the power of the Holy Ghost that's going to break and stop every negative cycle you've been in up to this point. Here we go as we go into the Word. I know you're not going to be the same. Coming up next on No Limits. Look at me, please. The only two adults that made it in to the promised land were the two that kept on speaking the promise. The two that kept on speaking by faith. Now they saw the same giants. They saw the same enemies. They saw the same hell. They felt the same pain. But they said, our God is well able. Our God can still bring us over. Our God can still make up. Coming up next. God wants to pour his grace, his anointing, his favor so much that if you can't even measure it, that there's not a cup big enough to contain it. All God needed was somebody to take the lid off because he gives without measure. And if you won't put a limit on him, he won't put a limit on you. But my God, you did it to the floor of the power of God. Numbers 14, verses 26 through verse 30. I want you to read them out loud with me. They're on the screens also. One, two, three. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, verse 27, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard their murmuring. Say that part again. I have... Say that part again. I have... One more time, say it again. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Verse 28, say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken. Stop, say that again. As, say it again. As ye have, say it again. As, one more time. As ye have spoken in my ears, so will I. Let's read that phrase. So, what is God going to do to you? What is God going to do to you? What is God going to do to you? Not what he said, but what you say about what he said. It's not what he says. It's your attitude towards what he says to determine that determines whether or not you're going to get what he said you know god could say something and really mean it for you but you can have such a nasty attitude that god changed his mind about what he said to you and he decides well that's the way they want to act i'll give them what they say Read verse 28 out loud again. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Verse 29. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that you were numbered according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have... Verse 30, the last verse, verse 30. Doubtless... You shall not come into the land concerning 
which I swear to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Read that last phrase. Save Caleb, the son of... Touch your neighbor and say, he talking about me. He talking about... And save Joshua, the son of Nun. Touch your other neighbor and say, he talking about me right there. Tell you this, I can't speak for anybody else. But I'm going to be in that number that makes it in. I'm going to be in that number that makes it over. I'm going to be in that number that makes it into the promise. I just want to minister from the subject. It's in your mouth. Touch two people and say, it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. I think I would start the dialogue by saying that God, in verse 27, said to Moses and Aaron, How long must I bear with this evil congregation? That when God looked out at a people who he wanted to bless, a people he wanted to heal, a people he wanted to prosper, a people he wanted to save, a people he wanted to promote and increase and take to another level, as he studied their actions and listened to their conversations, God determined that they just wanted to be evil. That they were committed to being stuck. They were committed, amen, to being depressed. That they had become satisfied with the status quo. And God called them evil. Not because they were smoking reefer. Not because they were hanging at Firestone. Or Roxy. Or whatever other ones I don't know about in this city. He didn't call them evil because they were watching pornography. He didn't call them evil because they committed adultery. He didn't call them evil because they murdered somebody. He didn't call them evil because they cheated on their taxes. He called them evil because they doubted what he said. And just as much as you label people wicked and evil and going to hell based on certain sins, external sins that they commit, God calls people evil that don't believe him. God calls people evil that claim him to be their God, but then with their mouth say things contrary to what God said. The Bible says that God said, how long? Shall I bear with this evil congregation, which do murmur against me? That word murmur means to complain. It means to speak against. It's to, it means to stay, I mean, or to say something that's contrary to what's already been said. It means to, to say that it can't be done what somebody said is going to be done. You can only murmur about something that somebody said that's going to be done. So God got upset because they begin to say what God could not do and what God would not do. Now listen to me. They never said God can't get us in. God can't bless me. God can't save me. They never used that verbiage. But would they use verbiage enough to make God say, they talking about me. By them saying they're broke, they're going to be sick, they're going to stay depressed, they're going to stay without, they might as well be saying, God can't get me in. God can't keep his word. God can't heal my... Now, mind you, they never said, God can't, God can't, God can't, God can't. But every time you're negative, you're saying, God can't. <laughs> every time you're negative, you're saying that God's not strong enough. That God cannot keep his words. God, murmur, let me, murmur means to complain. It means to be negative. And God says to complain is to talk against him. God says to complain is to deny his power. God says to complain is to say he can't do it. God says to complain is to call him a liar. If there's one thing God does hate, God hates negativity. You do know the only reason we're dealing with the devil on the earth is because the devil used to be an angel in heaven that started to complain. Y'all do know that, right? That as Lucifer in heaven, the angel, the third most powerful angel in the world, in civilization, in creation, began to become negative. He began to complain. And you know what God did? God kicked him. Because God hates a negative spirit. God hates the spirit of negativity. 
even if you don't know how God is going to do it, you have to somehow keep saying, I know he's going to make a way. I know he's going to make. Can you touch somebody saying he's going to make a way? He's going. I want you to look at me because your mouth can make you evil. You may never touch a prostitute. That don't mean you ain't evil. You may never hit the weed, but that don't mean you ain't evil. Some of you may never do some of that crazy stuff, but with the stuff that comes out of your mouth, God will call you evil. Put that verse back up on the screen so they know I'm not lying. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which do murmur, complain, talk negative against me? I have heard their murmurings. That brings me to my next point. God is listening. You can't whisper and God not hear you. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more of No Limits. You can't whisper and God not hear you. <laughs> you can't trick God. He's always listening. He's not even just listening to what you say. He's listening so hard that he's listening to the meditation of your heart. Y'all remember the story when God sent angels to Abraham in Genesis and they were eating. And all of a sudden the angels started to say, uh, you're going to have a baby and uh, you and Sarah are going to have a child. This is in the book of Genesis. And, and the Bible says that Abraham was talking to the angels. Amen. And Sarah was doing sometimes what people will do. Sarah was being curious. I'm being nice. Nosy. She was eavesdropping on the conversation. And while eavesdropping, she heard the angel say that you and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, y'all going to have a baby. Now, by now, they're in their 90s. They're, they're up there in age. But the angels are saying, God is saying, y'all going to have a baby. And the Bible says that God said about Sarah that she laughed. But if you read it real close, the Bible says she laughed within herself. She didn't even laugh out loud. But God heard her in her head. God is listening so. You understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. The point is this. Amen. Your victory is in your mouth. Your blessing is in your mouth. Amen. Your next level is in your mouth. And if you don't guard your mouth, you're going to mess your life up. If you don't watch what you say, you're going to mess your destiny up. If you don't take control of your speech, you're going to stay stuck where you're at. And the only reason you're mad is because you don't like where you're at. Then why not curse where you're at and declare that God got something better? Don't get bitter where you're at. Prophesy the way you're at. Praise where you're at. Pray where you're at. Take authority over where you're at. Don't complain about it. Your complaining or your negativity will make your stay there be longer. It will make your captivity last longer than it was intended. He said, how long? Must I bear with this evil congregation? For I have heard their murmurings, which they murmur against me. Listen to what he says. Every time they talk negative, I take it as though they're talking against God. Touch your neighbor and say, you don't want to mess with God. I'll say it louder than that. Touch your neighbor and say, you don't want to mess. Amen. Glory to God. God takes it personal. When you speak and you speak negative, he says, you're talking against him. And he becomes upset. He gets to the place where I don't even want to see them. I don't want to have to hear that anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave them where they're at. And we're going to move to another place. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to be Joshua, you be Caleb. As you have spoken, so will I do to you. Can you touch your neighbor and say, you're going to get what you say. The next verse says that God said, even as you have said, so will I do to you. Not, will I, not what I said am I going to do. I'm going to do what you said because you have more faith in what you're saying than what I'm saying. 
You believe more in your problem than you do the promise. You believe more in poverty than you do prosperity. You believe more in death than you do life. I was going to give you life. I was going to give you money. I was going to give you a house. But you keep talking like you're supposed to be sick. Like you're supposed to be broke. Like you're supposed to be lonely. So I'm going to leave you right where you're at. (laughs) Even as you have said. So will I do unto you. Say this with me. This is a powerful statement. Amen. What lives, say this, what lives in my mouth lives in my future. Whatever is living in your head and living in your heart is going to find its way on your mouth. And whatever makes its way out of your mouth is going to make its way into your future. So what lives in your mouth lives in your future. Look at me. God said, I'm not going to do what I said. Look at me because this is important. It wasn't that God couldn't do what he said. Because God still did what he said. He said, I'm not going to do what I said with you. I'm still going to get everybody in this under 21. And I'm still going to get Joshua and Caleb in. But I'm not going to take... You in. You don't never want to get God so mad that he decides to leave you behind and let you watch other people get blessed. Let you watch other people get married. Let y'all too tired of going to weddings. Aren't you tired of going to home dedications? Aren't you tired of going to ribbon cutters? When is it going to be your turn? When you change your stinking thinking. When you change what comes out of your mouth. Because your future lives in your... Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to be Joshua, you be Caleb. (laughs) For all of us over 21, we need to be claiming Joshua or Caleb. Because everybody under 21, they got free pass. In other words, God excused their mouths for ignorance. But he says, after a certain point, you ought to just know better. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. After a certain point, you should have just known better to act like that. Cut up like that. Come on, when your two-year-old falls out in Publix and throws a tantrum on the floor in Publix, you tend to look at them and grab them and chuckle a little bit. Because they two years old. But if your 12 year old fall on the floor and act like, here, I'm going to catch a charge in Winn-Dixie. Because you just ought to know better to act up it. He said, everybody over 21, you ought to know better. You're smart enough to speak to your mountain, to speak to your sickness, to speak to your money, to speak to your marriage, to speak to your destiny. Don't complain about it. Prophesy to it. Prophesy. He says, if you haven't learned your lesson by now, I'm just going to move on. Touch your neighbor, say, I'm Joshua, you be Caleb. <laughs> he says, I'm not going to do what I said. I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to do what you choose to believe. And I want you to know today that your faith works in the positive and your faith works in the negative. Whatever you believe, that's what you're going to get. Whatever you believe, positive or negative. He said, even as you have said, that's what I'm going to what? That's what I'm going to do. So your faith works in the positive and your faith has the capacity to work in the negative. Touch your neighbor again and say, I'm going to be Caleb. You're going to be Joshua. Look at me, please. The only two adults that made it in to the promised land were the two that kept on speaking the promise. The two that kept on speaking by faith. Now they saw the same giants. They saw the same enemies. They saw the same hell. They felt the same pain. But they said, our God is well able. Our God can still bring us over. Our God can still make up. That's the important revelation. It's not that Joshua and Caleb didn't see the giant. 
they saw the same Amalekites that the other children of Israel saw. They chose to have a positive attitude and just believe that what God said is what God is going to do. You know what that means? You can't be hating on somebody up in the church who God is blessing, who God is prospering, because they've been through some of the same hell you've been through. They've been through some of the... So how you going to hate on them just because they kept their attitude together while they were going through whatever they were going Touch your neighbor and say, stay right and God's going to make it right. Come on, say it to somebody else like you mean to say, stay right and God's going to make it right. Tell them God's going to make up for everything. For all that time in the wilderness, all that time being lonely, all that time being sick, all that time being broke, all that time being depressed. Payday is coming. Payday, hang on in there. Guard your lips. Guard your heart. Watch your soul. Say the right thing. Payday. 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 You've been where you've been long enough. You've been stuck. You've been down. You've been sick. You've been lonely. You've been depressed. You've been impoverished long enough. It's God's desire to bring deliverance to you today. I believe the word of God, and I believe this about the word. When we reach into him, he reaches into us. When we reach up to him, he reaches down to us. Right there from where you are, no matter how bad it is, you can decide to pray to Jesus. Jesus will help you, and he will strengthen you from the inside out. He will change you, and then he'll start to change your condition. Simply say this prayer with me. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I renounce my allegiance to the world, and I pledge allegiance to your Lordship. Amen. With that being said, we begin the internal change. It's going to slowly start to change the things on the outside of you. I encourage you to email us. Go to our website. Call the number on the screen and let us know about the decision that you made. Amen. Partner with us in ministry. Know this. Your best is coming. Now that you've given your life to the Lord. God bless you. And welcome to the family. Thank you for allowing us this time to minister to you today. Amen. Your future matters to God and your future matters to us. I believe that something good is around the corner for you. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 19, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God wants to give you the good of everything that he's made. He doesn't want anything bad to happen in your life. That good is contingent, though, upon your obedience and your willingness to obey God's word. A part of that obedience includes the area of our finances. To give to God the tithe that he asks for, a tenth of all we make. He says, give it to me to keep my ministry going. I encourage you right now to get your tithe out and prepare to send it into the address on the screen or to go to our website and give through that secure website or call the number that is on the screen to get your tithe into the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot expect God to multiply when you do not give him. But when you let God have it, he automatically, amen, decides to multiply what you sow. Get ready for increase as you obey God because he said you'll eat the good of the land when you obey. God bless you. I'm Pastor Zachary Tim. What an incredible word. God was speaking directly to you, your life, your future, your family, your finances, your health are all very important to God. Today you received simplistic instructions that you must follow to get the results, do what he said to do. To get to that place, amen, that he spoke of or that you desire to get to, do what God said to do. We believe in you again and we're praying for you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, touch them. Father, help them. Father, strengthen them. Father, deliver them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you, amen, if you need prayer to call that number on the screen. I also want to encourage you, amen, to become a part of our 3030 partnership program. Don't assume we'll be on tomorrow. Make sure that we're on tomorrow. Plug in, tap in, amen. Uh, help us in ministry. Help us to keep pushing to the next level. We believe in you again, and we're praying for you every day. Don't forget to come and visit New Destiny Christian Center, a family church meaning family needs. Something good is waiting for you right here at the City of Destiny. God's got a breakthrough with your name on it right here at New Destiny Christian Center. See you real soon. None of y'all are going but Caleb and Joshua. They were the only two that believed me. The only two that kept positive in a negative situation. And because they stayed positive, I'm going to do what I said. That's not that I'm doing anything special. I'm just going to do what I said. 
I said, I'm going to bring them in the land. I'm going to take them in the land. I said, I'm going to give them houses. I'm going to give them houses. It's not that God really doing anything special for me. He just doing what he said he would do for me. Had you kept your head or tail together, you'd be right next to me. Get back. Tomorrow. What an incredible time we're having in the Word. The Word of God is God's map for success. It is a sure way, amen, to success in life. The day will not allow me enough time to get you everything that was in my heart to minister to you. But I do want to get you the message in its entirety for free. That's right. I said for free. Simply call the number that is on the screen and we'll send you today's sermon for free. Call them and give them the message title and all you pay is shipping and handling. Shipping and handling, that's it. Now, of course, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, helped you, aided you, spoke to you in any way, I encourage you to sow a seed. You know that it costs more than shipping and handling to be on TV every day. Help us to keep ministry going. Sow a seed, amen, to help it go. Maybe it's a hundred, maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's fifty, but do your best, amen, as we go forward in ministry together. I believe in you and your best is coming because you obey the word. God bless you. If this message has been a blessing to you, consider sowing a seed to the continuance of No Limits Around the World. With your financial support, determination, perseverance, and love, we are achieving excellence and making a difference around the world. For more information about us, visit us online at ndcc.tv.